Welcome back everyone. This oh, sorry. Uh, welcome back everyone. This is the course on dark web anonymity and cybersecurity. I welcome back to one more lovely, beautiful, and extremely useful content. The course is all about making use of dark web and being anonymous at the same time. And at the end, we'll learn what are the different steps of, of uh, making use of cybersecurity, the best practices to be uh, in a private mode while accessing the public content. All right, so we'll first start with the, what are the risks involved when you are accessing the course, I mean, sorry, not really the course that you, we are doing at this moment, but accessing some of the contents that you feel very private, or maybe you are in a, in a business where free pitch, free speech is cut, where free speeches is really, really important, where your activity belongs to press. All right. So this is where having your having the power of being anonymous is very, very important. And that's where we'll learn more about making use of dark web to access some of to not really to access, but to see what are the different uh, contents available. Is it good? Is it bad? And for sure, it's going to be bad for 90% or 95% of the time. But it is important to look at it, what all it is. At the same time, we'll also see if you are even using, making use of your public web, the freely available web, what are the different steps of being, uh, being into private mode or anonymous so that whatever activity you're doing, you still be safe. All right. So let's get started. The first thing that we'll learn is the introduction of this course. And over here, we'll learn about different risks involved with it. So if, if, if you are an user, as I told you in the business of, uh, you know, those free speech or press related stuff, or maybe in a, you have some content which can, sen which can be very sensitive to some party out there, right? So in that case, it is very important for you. But before we do that, uh, we need to understand where the risk really resides, all right? The first thing is your hardware itself, your your system, your laptop, your desktop, mobile phone, anything, all right? So anything related to your hardware system from which you're accessing to the rest of the world, that's where the risk resides as well. You might be having your data, but that doesn't get erased, wiped out, whenever you, you, know, you, you make use of it that becomes a risk for you because that's where the persistence or the part of data really resides. Even if you're making use of encryption technology, there are software, there are agencies out there who can grab the, those information if they, if they want it, all right? Next is the operating system. Now understand this, operating system help you help use to make, or make use of all your application and that runs on your hardware, right? Maybe you talk about Windows, maybe you talk about your Mac OS, you have um, Ubuntu or Arch Linux, anything, even Kali as well. Uh, this all are operating system. And now, if, if these, these can store the information, because we never know this, the, the open source information, it's good enough, but at the same time, um, Windows or Mac OS, these are third party. I mean, these are the pr private organization and we don't have any control about it, right? So the next thing is the browsers. So understand this way, whatever you do in the public network, you can either do it maybe email conversation or maybe on the browser itself. And browser is something which made all the activity available without installing any agents, right? So uh, we are in a situation, we are in the period, in era, where everything has gone into the application, starting from your email conversation, to chat, to even to your net banking information, or maybe you're browsing to any after, everything can be tracked. If everything goes to the other party, goes to the any other uh, corner of the world through the gateway and this gateway passes or send the mirror of the traffic to the national agencies to have a proper surveillance to all their citizens for any purpose to to influence or to have a proper monitoring to their activity all those stuff right 
and that's where the risk really resides right and then it comes to the email email that you make use of maybe gmail outlook yahoo mail all these are made for the purpose of productivity for giving you a useful platform to send an email but does not provide any sort of uh, private or anonymity right because this is where if you send an email it goes to their server and from there it can be faced to multiple other uh, client or maybe it can be sent to the uh, receiver as well so there's no sort of anonymity no sort of, sort of private uh, or making it anonymous as well and the next thing is your Wi-Fi now this is of course it sounds really crazy but yes it is because if you have uh, I'm not sure if you have looked at my earlier uh, other ethical hacking content courses you will find if somebody it's get the access to your wireless network it can see it can actually get to see what all you do right with the help of man in the middle attack they can get to see what all you're doing in your in your browser or from your what all communication going out of your laptop or from your network can be seen or can be you know can be spied as well somebody can see that personally all right now at the end I know it sounds some some sound some very very different stuff but yes of course credit card information how exactly that's a great question to answer this when somebody share their information as a part of credit card or maybe any other any other information like social uh, SSN or any other information anybody can locate them right because if even if you're buying something and um, you're sharing information like your credit card people can track okay who who was the one who bought this information because that's where your name address and all this information has to be filled up and it can be tracked as well now um, it is important to understand how these all risks can be covered at the end right and that's that's what we we are talking about while being anonymous being into achieving the privacy as well so this is all about it now let's talk about how to secure how to uh, reduce the risk on every layer so we talk about for, uh, risk at the hardware operating system browser email all right so we'll talk about each one of them one by one so let's first talk about the operating system and this is where you can make use of telos what's so special about it unlike any operating system which has to be binded with your hardware you know i mean of course the macbook your your mac os can only run on the apple of course but for rest of the hardware like hp dell windows can be installed or any other operating system can be installed but remember this the data still del, still resides with it once you install any operating system the data resides with it and your operating system can bind those information can can store those information and um, when you make use of telos it is built to make it non-persistent so you can make use of a usb drive i'll show you in the uh, later courses where you can have a bootable pen drive with telos and this telos you can once you install insert on any of the laptop it's just good to go you can do your work and once you remove it it wipe up or wipe out all all the information all your activity that you have done on this so that's useful all right next it's it's star browser we have talked about the risk related to your browsing activity broad browser is something uh, we'll be making use of it when we when we try to access or try to see what all stuff are there on the dark web right and this is we are going to learn and we'll see for the educational purpose why i say that because this is something which is very very important dark web is something which is mostly used for the bad activity and for the educational purpose we wanted to see what all are there uh, in the dark web so that we can educate others how to make yourself secure and not to go on any dark website dark web or dark net uh, you know just for sake of exploring it and how to be uh, safe enough before you do any activity over there all right so now let's hotspot Wi-Fi make use of your hotspot Wi-Fi whenever you go wherever you travel don't make use of any public Wi-Fi activity and of course I'm talking about some best practices in the same stuff itself 
uh, of course open PGP and this is something which is very important this is a very old technology but this is still works because this is where uh, you know no, no provider really comes in you send an email uh, you in get encrypt uh, you you encrypt those email content other party if he has the key then only he can decrypt it and can see what is there inside all right now this is all about making your email secure enough or I mean safe enough private enough Bitcoin I know I know all of you know Bitcoin right but we are talking about it for not for making money out of it not to have appreciation or valuation all those stuff but what I'm talking about is if you really want to make yourself anonymous on the on anywhere in the world uh, in spite of using your credit card information make use of Bitcoin because that's where your personal information never get shared all right now burner or personal laptop if you remember i talked about the risk related to your hardware and this is where you can avoid that by making use of any of the non-personal or burner laptop all right never never ever never ever share your personal information with anybody right because this is where even if you tried everything you try to reduce the risk on everywhere if you share your personal information there's no no way to go right because you never know where it exactly going around right and how it can be used now what i'm really talking about at the end is what whatever we are going to learn this is all on the personal uh, for the educational purpose so make sure make sure you never do any illegal activity on dark web this is my high highly 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 uh, personal advice and um, because this is something where if you do that and if you get engaged with it you get you can get tracked as well so this is where you have to avoid doing that as well and this is all covers the uh, introduction to uh, dark web courses dark web anonymity and cybersecurity course now we have learned about what are the risks available and how to mitigate those risks. We'll learn each of these points in detail throughout this course and some of the more uh, advanced topics as well throughout this course too. All right. So till then, I hope you like this lecture. We'll catch you in the next one. Thank you.